Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Antonisha and today I am going to be talking about um, doing my February wrap up. So the books that I managed to read in February and talk about what I am reading in March. Um, I know this is coming a little late, but I am just getting back into my filming groove um, and my reading groove for that matter. So um, better late than ever. So I will go ahead and get started. Um, I just got off of work. It is 820 um, at night and my voice is almost gone. So I'm going to try to make this as quick as I possibly can, but we know I like to talk. Um, so to start, um, I think I mentioned in my live that I did the other day that I read <clears throat> five books in February and then I had read through most of Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead but I actually finished six books I forgot about one of them and then most of Harlem Shuffle so the first book that I finished um in February was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson um this is a YA mystery maybe thriller-ish um I've had this on my shelf for a while and I've wanted to read it for a while because the audiobook, I actually bought the audiobook on Libro FM back when I used to use this subscription. Um, and the audiobook is fantastic. Um, it is a full cast audio with sound effects and everything else. Um, so this is starring our main character, um, Pip. And she is a high school senior and five years prior, I think it's five years. Yeah, five years prior, um, the most popular girl in their small town <clears throat> who also went to the high school that Pip is currently attending, um, Andy Bell, she was, she went missing um, and people have assumed that she was dead and they assumed that her boyfriend Sal killed her and then he killed himself because they found his body a few days after Andy went missing. So Pip decided to re-examine the case. They closed the case and um, basically, like I said, the whole town believes that um, Andy Bell is dead and that her boyfriend killed her. They closed the case and that's what that's what everyone believes. So Pip decides to re-examine it and see um, what really happened as her like final senior project. And she starts discovering some things um, about this case and about all of the people involved. And um, it was really good. Um, for it being a YA, I don't go into YA books with high expectations. I just don't. But this was really good. There were twists and turns that came out of nowhere um, and not in a bad way. It came out of nowhere like I just was not expecting it. But then thinking about it after the fact, it made perfect sense. Um, but this was really, really good. I gave it five stars. Like I said, the audiobook is fantastic. Um, I would highly recommend doing um, an immersion reading. So with the audiobook and physical or at the very least doing the audio because like I said, it has a full cast audio. Um, so all of the characters have a different voice actor playing them. They have sound effects. She's doing like um, phone interviews for, with people for her project and you can actually hear it sounding like she's talking to someone over the phone. Um, so it's really, really good. Um, <clears throat> the second book that I finished is the one that I forgot about um, and that is um, Mutually Beneficial by Heather Guerre. Guerre. I'll post the image up here because I read it on my Kindle. Um, it is a contemporary romance um a bit smutish um I would classify it as smut but looking back on it it isn't like full-blown just smut smut but um it actually did have a pretty good storyline I gave it 4.5 stars um this one is following um I forgot the characters names now um what is their name um Annalise and Jason um so Annalise is a woman who um she has gotten behind on her rent which we find out is because her brother is a drug addict and so she has been using her money to pay for him to go to a private rehab and she gets behind on her rent and um jason is her landlord and so he comes requesting the rent and she decides to um basically beg beg for mercy in this um sense and she offers herself um in exchange for her rent and so they make this arrangement of um them having sex with each other in exchange for her rent and then it just goes from there um feelings get involved and all kinds of other stuff and like i said it was actually pretty good the um sex scenes were pretty steamy but it wasn't like i said just full-blown smut with nothing else going on although there's a lot of sex like right from the very beginning because we jumped straight into it but um i give it 4.5 stars it is the first book in a series called indecent proposals 
Um, I don't really have any intention of continuing on with the series because the series doesn't continue. It's more like companion novels. So we don't continue with these same characters, but it's the same type of theme of Indecent Proposals. So there's that. Okay. And the other four books that I read in um, February were all part of a series um, called The Four Horsemen by um, Sarah Bailey. The first book being Carnage, the second one being Chaos, the third one being Corrode, and the last one being Cataclysm. And I absolutely love these books. I gave the first book 4.25 stars the second and third books, five stars, and then the last book, 4.25 stars. Um, and this book basically follows, um, this is a reverse harem dark romance, first of all. Um, so it follows our heroine, uh, what is her name? Scarlet, I couldn't think of her name. Um, her name is Scarlet and she was in an accident when she was 16 years old. So. 10 years have passed she was in an accident and she was in a coma for a month and she has no memory of her life for the first 16 years so she has literally been held captive by her parents um, on their estate in kent so this takes place um in england she's been held captive by her parents on their estate for the past 10 years and um basically they offer her the chance of freedom if she infiltrates this group of guys and helps to bring them down and so she basically does that. She goes and starts working for them and kind of has this plan in mind of trying to bring them down um, so that she can win her freedom from her parents. These four guys are expecting her um, and they know more about her past that she doesn't know. And so a whole series of events happens. Again, it is a reverse harem dark romance. So she ends up sleeping with all of the different guys and a lot of things go on. And I really, really enjoyed this. So again, the series is called The Four Horsemen. So it plays off of that theme of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So each of the guys represents one of the horsemen. And I think it was really, really interesting um, how their characters displayed um, the traits of the horsemen, if you are familiar with The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Um, so it's very interesting how um she weaved just their different character traits and also their each of them had their own individual kink um and how that kink kind of tied into um the four horsemen that horsemen that they embodied as well um this has a lot of trigger warnings as most uh dark romance does um i won't mention any of them because some of them are spoilers but if you feel that you need to definitely check them out um i will say there is a lot of blood play um that is one of the kinks of one of the guys and most dark romances that i read have some type of blood blood play or knife play or something like that this one was extreme like there was a literal bloodbath um in sex in the bloodbath at the end of the fourth book um and i got just a tiny bit squeamish because i'm just not one for blood and you know bodily fluids but the storyline actually was really good and that's that's the thing for me um even when i'm reading smut like it has to have an actual good storyline and good character development and this one did so i really did enjoy it highly recommend it um if dark romance is your thing again be sure to check out the trigger warnings if that is something that you need to do um so those are the six books that i finished in february um i also read the majority of Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, but I just finished it last night. Today is Tuesday, March 8th. So I just finished this last night. So I will talk about this in my March wrap up, but um, five stars and then some, <laughs> but I'll talk about that more in March. Um, the books that I am reading in March, <clears throat> excuse me, I talked about it in my live stream, I think. Um, so the two Rita read-alongs read-alongs that I am participating in um, are both from Bookstar which is a book club book community that was formed by Amy from A Star Reads and Danielle from Bookara. I will look, link both of their YouTube channels below um, and if I can find it I will link the announcement video for both of these series. So the first one is the um, Mortal Instruments read-along. Um, first book being City of Bones they read this book in February. February, Yeah, they read it last month. <clears throat> and then they will be reading the next month, next book in April. So I'm playing catch up. Um, I don't know a whole lot. I have the first four 
one, two, three. Yeah, the first four books in this series, there are six, I think. I think there's six books in the Mortal Instruments. One, two, three, four, five. No, five. Okay, so I'm only missing one. I thought there were six. There might be six. I'm not sure. Um, but I have the first four, so I'll have to get the last one or two if there's six um, by the time I get to it. But um, I don't know a whole lot about this other than it is um, YA fantasy um, and it involves this one girl. It looks like there are, what do they call it? Demons, werewolves, vampires, all of the creatures that I love. Um, and there, there are these shadow hunters that are tasked with hunting down um, these various creatures. And we have our uh, main character, Clary, I think. Yes, yeah, it's kind of funny because Cassie Clare, her name is Carrie. Um, Clary, excuse me. And she sees, I guess, um, a demon attack or something like that. And um, they are trying to figure out why she can see things that she shouldn't be able to see if she's just a normal um, human and all of that. So um, I've had these on my shelves for a minute um, and I knew I wanted to participate in the read along when they announced it at the end of last year. Like I said, I'm a little behind, so I need to get started with that so that come April, I will be on track and reading the same book as them. They've already done the live show for City of Bones, I believe. So I will link it below if you've already read the book and you want to um, see the live show. I will link it below if you are interested. And then the other um, read along that they are also doing is the All Souls trilogy. And then there's a fourth book as well. Um, and that first book is The Discovery of Witches um, by Deborah Harkness. Um, so they're basically alternating months. So one month they're doing um, Mortal Instruments and then the next month they're doing this. So this is the book for March. Um, so I'll be on track with this one to hopefully finish it and participate um, in the live show when they do it. Um, and if I remember correctly, this one is taking place a lot of the time in um, Oxford's library. And there is yeah, Diana. She's a scholar and descendant of witches. Um, she discovers or unearths some type of enchanted manuscript. Um, and she just, I guess, tosses it to the side. But by her finding it, it, it was this long lost document and a whole bunch of different characters start descending on the library. So all kinds of fantastical. So it looks like we have demons, witches, and other creatures. Um, and there's a vampire in here. Y'all, I love vampires, witches, and werewolves. Um, demons and fairies I can do without, but they're cool when they're mixed in with other ones. So I'm very, very excited. And this one says it's romantic and suspenseful. So I'm excited to get to this one and see how I like it. I did order um, the whole box set for the trilogy. I don't think I ordered the fourth book, but I am going to get it because it's part of the read along. So like I said, I will link um, their announcement videos below for those if you are interested. Um, and I am also doing the magical readathons. Um, what do they call it? The mini magical readathon. So I never built my character back in the fall when I did the novice path. Um, so I am going to be doing that and basically using these same two books plus two others to complete my prompts for the Magical Readathon and um, some other things that I um, want to participate in, but I wasn't going to choose another book for. So I'll tell you about that. So basically, um, for Buzz Wordathon for this month, the theme is Location Buzz Wordathon is the read -a not readathon. It's the reading challenge that is. Um, created by Kayla from Books and Lala. Um, it used to be a readathon, but she just turned it into a reading challenge that you can kind of do on your own. Um, and it is my goal to participate in it as much as I can throughout the year. Um, so again, the theme for, I was going to say for February, the theme for March is location. And so for that, I am going to be reading using um, City of Bones because city is a location to me. Um, so I'm just going to make that one work. Um, the other one is the Read Your Shelf Challenge, which is um, put on by Chantel um, at Chantel Reads All Day. She changed her channel name. Um, that was another one. If you watch my Reading Goals video that I put out back in December, there were quite a few um, reading challenges that I wanted to participate in this year and use those challenges to prompt me 
to pull books from my shelves. So if I can fit, fit in books that I'm already planning on reading into them, I will. Um, so for Read Your Shelf, the prompt for March is growth. Um, and pretty much every single book that I'm reading this month has some type of growth in it. Um, I know both City of Bones and Discovery of Witches has growth. Um, I'm also reading Muse of Nightmare. I actually started it today um, and it was kind of slow at work. So I've already gotten 60 pages in today while I was at work. Um, and this has a lot of growth in it as well. So that will count. Um, the other reading challenge is TBR Knockout, which is a reading challenge hosted by Mel from Completely Melanie. Um, and she has two prompts every month. So the first prompt is shape shifting. And again, I can use either Discovery of Witches or City of Bones um, because they both have werewolves, right? Hmm. No, I don't know if Discovery of Witches has werewolves, but I know City of Bones does have werewolves and they are shapeshifters, so I can use that. Um, and then the second prompt is Includes Magic. And so A Discovery of Witches would work for that. Muse of Nightmare would work for that. So all three of them would work for that. Um, and then for the Magical Readathon, um, for building my character, my character's background, um, I will link the playlist for the Magical Readathon if you're interested in getting caught up with it. But um, like I said, one part of it is that you had to build your character. And so there were three different prompts for building your character and the prompts would vary depending on which option you chose. So for my character's background, yeah, I think you either had an urban or a rural setting. I chose urban um, and the prompt for that is a book set in a city or town. So of course I'm using City of Bones. Um, for the province that my character is from, I chose dark metal. Um, and so for that prompt, the prompt for that is to read Dark Academia, which I definitely believe A Discovery of Witches is about because, I mean, it takes place in a library. Um, and then for Heritage, my character is Ilterian. Um, and so the prompt for that is a book with, with a crow or a red cover because the Ilterians can um, transform into crows and they have red in theirs. And so that is where Muse of Nightmare is coming in. Muse of Nightmares, excuse me. And then the other two prompts that just came up for the mini magical readathon, um, one is to choose a conduit for your magic. Um, I chose the dagger because that is the conduit that is specific to um, the house that I am in. I'm trying to see if I have my, my little character card thingy here. Um, so my character... Um, their house is the Mind Walkers, um, their legacy, excuse me, their legacy is the Mind Walker. And so a conduit that is specific to the Mind Walkers is a dagger. Um, and it's actually in the image that G put out in like the whole lore and everything for the Ilterians. So the prompt for a dagger is to read a standalone book. Um, and that is where I chose the Silent Companions because it was small and I needed a small book on here. Um, also for my legacy, um, I chose the Shadow Realm and that prompt was a book with a dark cover. So that's another reason why I chose the Silent Companions. Also because um, this is talking about companions and because it's a mystery, I can technically use it for March Mystery Madness as well, um, just to say that I participated in it. So there's that. Um, and then the other book that I'm thinking I want to read is Neon Gods by Katie Roberts. Um, I bought it on my Kindle the other day. It was like $2. Um, one of the, um, sorry, the owner of an Etsy sticker shop, um, she makes stickers specifically for the Amplify Planner. Um, her sticker company is called um, Carabico. I will talk about it more because when I do my Amplify haul, I got a bunch of stickers from her. But she's also a big reader as well, um, as I found out in the Facebook group. And she has her own fantasy romance um, book club on Facebook. And so I decided to join it. And um, I'm not going to be reading the book that they're reading in March, but in February they read um, Neon Gods and they had a bunch of discussion questions in there and I've been wanting to read it for the longest so that kind of prompted me to go pick it up and um, there is like a six month hold um, wait time at my library and I was like I don't know if I wanted to order the physical book um, although I know it is the first book in a series so I did just decide to go ahead and get it on Kindle for like two dollars and if I love it um, I may buy the other books on Kindle. I'm trying to 
I'm trying to restrain myself with buying physical books <laughs> um, because I have a lot of them and I'm trying to get my shelves. A lot of my books on these shelves are unread. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm trying to focus on reading what's on my shelves. And if um, I don't absolutely love it or plan on rereading it, um, then I'm planning on unhauling it. So like um, Good Girl's Guide to Murder, um, it was five stars. I loved it, but I know I'm not. Anytime there's a mystery or thriller, I typically do not reread those because I already know what the plot twists are. Um, so it's not as fun for me. So primarily, I want my shelves to be fantasy, sci-fi, and nonfiction um, in series because those are the ones that I see myself rereading. Um, so I want to start unhauling books as I'm reading them, but I don't want to just unhaul them and never have read the books. So I'm trying to limit what books I do buy. So like I still get my book of the month books and stuff like that. But in general, I try to, I just, like I said, I try to limit buying so many physical books. And because I'm very, very comfortable reading on my Kindle now too, anytime it comes to like any type of like smut or romance or stuff like that, I'm just used to using my Kindle Unlimited subscription for it. So that's that's the goal. I'll never stop buying physical books, but I'm trying not to buy as many um, because like I said, I need to redo my shelves because I have books next door I need to bring over here. So that is my February wrap up and what I am planning on reading in March. Let me know um, what you are reading in March. If you are participating in any of the millions of readathons that are happening in the month of March. Um, let me know what you're participating in and what you are reading. Like I said, I am, I just started Muse of Nightmares and I'm so excited y'all. I have started this book, no lie, I think three times. I think this is my fourth time starting this book and I've never gotten past the second chapter. Um, so I'm really, really happy because I knew I would enjoy it. I just, I don't know why I kept putting it off, but now that I'm like really getting into the story, it's like, I don't want to put it down. Um, so I feel like I'm going to fly through this. I'm going to get this video edited because it needs to go up tomorrow and then just spend the rest of the night reading so yeah so let me know what you guys are reading in the comments um be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already and i will see you guys in the next one bye